Hi there. Um, I just finished repotting the oncidium in the back there. Um, and then I was going through my other orchids and I decided to do a repot on this as well. And it is a nobili type. Here's the label. Um, and it's a nobili type um, dendrobium that was uh, last potted in 2010, if I'm reading this correctly. So um, it looks like it's in need of a repot. Here's my little label to go with it. I have it sitting inside of a clay pot just because it's so top heavy and it won't balance on its own. But this is what the flowers look like and uh, I haven't seen it bloom as yet. Now, so I had this orchid outside in the summer and I brought it indoors just last week because the temperature started dipping a little bit and I didn't want to risk um, frost or it being, you know, uh, hit by frost. So um, I brought it in and then I noticed that the, the stems were starting to swell slightly. So I'm not sure because this is my first blooming size dendrobium but um, I think that means that it could develop into flower buds um, so and with the nobili uh, we just go through a little bit more about the nobili as I'm working through the uh, repotting so what I am going to do is it's currently in a very very small pot maybe a three inch pot I'm moving it up into a four inch pot it's got lots of ventilation and uh, the slits on the side for ventilation as well. And this is the mix I'm going to be using. It's uh, one is to one is to three parts. So one of the perlite, one of the sphagnum moss and three of the bark mix. Um, and the reason I'm using one of the sphagnum is because it does expand and almost double in size. So that will become one is to two is to three and uh, the perlite helps aerate the medium a little bit so that um, the roots can uh, don't feel uh, you know bound in and the the bark chips it's the one that i have it's a medium bark mix it's also got some coconut co um, husk in it which will help retain some of the moisture too and so i'm not using too much of the sphagnum moss just there so I have it in a little bit of water here and I'm going to use a little bit more water so just to soak all of it in. I like my medium soaked and washed um, first before I pot uh, up the um, orchid and it works. In this case it does work so I'm just going to let it sit for a bit and absorb more of the moisture from the water and in the meantime we'll have a look at the um, plant. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to cut down the sphagnum moss. Maybe I'll just leave it like that this time and see if that, you know, makes a big difference or not. Because I find if it's cut, if I cut it down, sometimes it disintegrates a little too fast. Um, okay, so let me just mix that in there. Alright, and now to go back into getting the um, pot or the plant out of the pot. Okay, so first off, I have this uh, support in here that I'm going to very gently remove out of the pot and then take it off of my plant without damaging the orchid. I will reuse that um, support. And I'm also noticing that there's some black spots. Maybe I should keep it in frame to show you. Okay, so... There's a little bit of black spotting on the stem right here. So I'm going to spray it after I've potted it up. I'm going to spray it with some um, neem oil and uh, see if that'll, you know, and maybe um, look up what that could be. I'm hoping it's not any kind of rot because I've dealt with black rot recently. And I don't, oh, it's actually coming off. Okay. All right. So in the meantime, you can see there are some new root tips, like right there. 
and all around. Um, but this plant is really waiting to come out of its pot. So what I'm going to do is gently squeeze it, squeeze the pot. It's very dry in there. And I thought if I wet it, it might be a little too hard to take it out of the pot. So let me see. Holding on. Oh, it came right off. There's nothing in there. The perlite has just disintegrated. Lots of perlite they've put in. So that's a good thing, I guess. Not so much of sphagnum moss this time. Oh, there it is. It's a mixture of sphagnum moss and perlite and all kinds of things in there. Charcoal. It's put in some charcoal too. Okay, so I'm going to tease out the roots. Being careful not to break them. Because um, it does have some good roots in there. So, and I will slowly take out... Uh, actually, the roots are very, very um, stiff. And there are new root tips there. So I don't want to damage it. I'm going to soak the whole thing into some water and maybe then ease out the roots. So let me do that. I'll soak it in water for about 15 minutes or so. Get get all this um, medium out of the roots uh, and okay, um, so get back. I took a long time. <laughs> I took a long time. It took me a while. <laughs> and I cleaned out all the roots as much as I could. And it's a big like it's a really large root system um, and as I always mention you have to be careful to remove any of the old sphagnum moss that would be right at the center of the root system because if you leave it there and if it's you know disintegrated and old and rotting and all that it can um, cause disease to the um, crown of the plant um, now with roots like this, see, there are some nice root tips on a very long root. So you'd be careful not to just chop them all off, but kind of inspect them. And because I have soaked it in water, it's a lot pliable to work with. And you'll see lots of green roots, lots of white roots. Those are alive as well. And then there are some that are brown, like this one here. And it's there's nothing there so roots like this I'm gonna trim off and kind of reduce it just a little bit and I will get back to you but when you are trimming the roots you're going to use a sterilized uh, pair of scissors uh, to avoid cross-contamination between plants so um, I will trim it and get okay so I've cut out all of the um, dead roots and some that had some black spots on it too and it's looking a lot um, leaner and nicer now okay so and then when I was washing out the plant I made sure to wash uh, where the black spots were and I was able to get most of it out but after I have repotted the plant I will also uh, make sure to apply a fungicide um, and uh, you know just to make sure that if there if it is mold or rot or whatever it is that uh, it will stop it in its tracks before it gets in. Onto the potting of the plant my potting mix is ready to go it is uh, it has been soaking and it's all nicely mixed in there I left my sphagnum moss um, in long strands and I just want to see if um, that'll help the medium a little bit. Uh, I noticed there was a lot of perlite in the plant. And um, uh, so I, it's a good thing that I mixed in enough perlite uh, in this potting mix. Okay, so to start off, I'm not sure if I should go with this pot, which is a 4-inch pot. Um, or if I should go to a 5-inch pot. Okay, so about the plant itself, it was, um, I, I got the plant in June of this year, um, a few months ago, and at the time it was a mature plant, uh, blooming size, but it had no blooms on it, so I haven't seen the flowers on it. 
um, as yet, but I know that they will look like this. Pretty flowers. And it was all, it was outdoors all summer, and then I just brought it in uh, indoors last week, like I said. And uh, it has lots of new roots and is really in need of a repot. So what we've done is we've uh, cleaned up the root system here and now we are going to repot it. Um, the plant, um, you know, may, uh, it develops its buds uh, on sides of the canes. Um, but it takes about three months before the buds develop to bloom so it's about three months before they will actually bloom but they you know so it's a very slow process and uh, it can be anywhere from 10 to 100 blooms at a time on a good plant I don't know how many blooms I'm gonna get on this one or if I'm gonna get any blooms but like I said those swollen um, parts of the stem is an indication that there might be some flowers to come um, about the fertilizing, it's very important uh, with Dendrobium nobilis that you stop fertilizing at the end of summer, which is for us uh, around the end of August or early September, and uh, then to restart uh, fertilizing it at the uh, end of January again or early February. And the reason you want to do that is if you don't stop the fertilizing, uh, for the winter, uh, they go dormant in the winter, and um, if you don't stop doing the, uh, if you don't stop fertilizing them, they will there will be lots of growth as far as leaves and roots, and no flower spikes. So you wanna you wanna enjoy these flowers, and so you want to restart the fertilizing in late January uh, when you see the flowers appear. So let's go back to the potting now. I think it might be too small for this pot. So yeah, let me just up the size on the pot. I think I'll need a five inch pot. Okay, so here is my five inch pot. I'm gonna try that again. Okay, put some of the mix on the bottom. Lay the plant and there's lots of room now for the plant and holding the plant up here so it's not to cover your view i'm just going to place the medium around being careful not to go um, above the crown of the uh, plant which is right around there okay i'm holding I'm just going to tamp in the medium as much as i can working my way around Dendrobium nobilis are uh, plants that do go dormant in the winter, around November or so, and they are cool growers, so they like the cooler temperatures at night, and uh, this actually helps with um, the um, flowers being formed, um, or it helps for buds to appear. So if you want your dendrobium to bloom, dendrobium nobilis, you want to make sure that they have evening cooler temperatures in the evening and warmer temperatures during the day so somewhere around 60 degrees Fahrenheit in the night is really good for them nothing um, too warm than that and then once you see the flower spikes uh, flowers appear the buds appear then you can uh, increase the temperature a little bit up to about 65 or so but they don't like it too hot so, um, and as far as light, they like to be grown outdoors in the summertime. So make use of that when you can, somewhere in June to September. And then um, they also, when it is outside, they like about 30% of shade or bright shade. Um, you can even have it in filtered sun indoors. So that'll really help. And then as far as the watering, uh, when they are outside, uh, they can take watering almost every day, uh, depending on how um, dry the medium gets. And if, once you bring them indoors, of course, you can follow the regular uh, watering process of once a week or when the medium is very, very dry. You don't want the medium to um, 
uh, be too wet or you don't want to water when the medium is wet. Um, and then as far as repotting, they do like to be pot bound like I said. So now this is going to take a while for this plant to fill into this pot because it's a little too big for it. Um, I would have liked to size somewhere in between four in four and five inches. So uh, and then you know the standard orchid mix like we're using right now is very good. You want something in there to help retain some of the moisture and that's why we're using the coconut fiber. Uh, I'm sorry the coconut um, husk in the bark in the bark mix as well as my sphagnum moss. So there you go. I'm just trying to get in all that perlite and it's a little wobbly so to help with the plant being a little more stable I am going to put that stake back that I had and I really like the stake with the um, just back it up here a little bit there we go um, you know with the ring on top so because so there it, you go uh, help pot it up my plant and you see this water that I had in the bottom it's got a lot of uh, it's very dark and that's all the dust from the bark mix the um, coconut uh, fiber, the sphagnum moss, the perlite, everything, the dust on it. You don't want the dust in your orchid um, pot because it will just, um, you know, make the medium more dense than it needs to be. I don't need to water this plant um, because I have just, you know, put in all of the wet medium in there, so it's so, gonna be good for. Yeah, let me just back it up here so I can show you. There's my plant, there's the orchid, there are the swollen um, places on the stem. Okay, and I have them on that stem as well as on another one here. There, right there. So, yeah, and, and I like that stake that I have support. It's really good. So, there you go. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope it was helpful to somebody. And uh, please do post your comments below and um, you know let me know uh, if, if there is anything that I should have done differently because I am learning and it is nice to be sharing these um, experiences with all of you who, who are watching my videos. I want to thank um, uh, especially those that have been giving me feedback. Buckeye Orchids, I really appreciate um, you looking into these videos and uh, then, you know, giving me the feedbacks. I enjoy watching your videos too. So, um, thank you once again. And for those who have not subscribed as yet, please do so. So, you'll be the first to know when I upload a video. And uh, you can get to watch one of these videos every week, hopefully, um, on Orchids and another one on my crafts that I like to do. So thanks again for watching and until next time, enjoy your orchids. Bye-bye.